Hey folks, Phil the B-Man here. I've got uh, a little bit of an extracting hack to show you today. You're looking at my steamer that I use on my extracting facility. There's the specs. I bought this off eBay. I had a really expensive fancy one, although I didn't have a lady painted on the side before. And when it burnt out, I bought a cheap one, and it's worked just as good. What this does, I have it uh, suspended above my extractor in order to keep out of uh, the worst of the spray from the wash down. And then it has a, it, well, it generates steam. It's, it's designed for uh, rich people to have uh, hot showers, I guess. And uh, I think that because I got the idea to get it when we were on a holiday at a, at a, well, let's just say a more expensive hotel. And uh, we were sitting in the shower and there was steam coming out. And I thought, what's going on here? So I got the, uh, probably the first person at that hotel to insist on the uh, manager show me the utility room to figure out exactly what was going on. And there was one of these little uh, st steam generators, each, uh, each room had one, and so the steam comes out, Let's see if I can get up there, it has a, uh, st a pressure release valve, a safety valve, this is where the steam comes out, this is where the water is plumbed in, and that's the hydro and or electricity, I guess, only Canadians say hydro, and then a drain valve at the bottom. And I put, it probably only, originally had a plug, but I plumbed in a valve so each, it's easier to drain every winter. And that hose, I have it for the, so the steam out goes up. It likes to spit a little bit, and so I have it first run up a little bit just so it catches the worst droplets which run back and then the actual steam runs down and into the back of my extractor. I'll show you what that looks like on the front side. Just no, uh, no nozzle or anything. Uh, if you were doing this at a rich hotel, you would probably have a, a, some sort of jet there. I found uh, any obstruction inside the extractor was that it was trouble. So it's just a straight pipe um, bulkhead fitting, I think they call that. And I'll turn it on a bit for you. It takes a bit to get going, but uh, we'll check on that back in a second. In the I want to answer the obvious question, which is how much water does this add to the to the whole operation? So here's my scale, and we're going to tear this pan. Four seventy-five. Okay, and now we're going to put that pan underneath the extractor. And we're going to catch the drips. And I'll let it run for a while. In fact, I have a timer on the extractor. This is the, so there we are blinking 12, means I just turned the power on, and that'll count our, our minutes. So I'm going to let this run for a while. I'll turn the camera off. I'll let it run for a while. Here's what it looks like the steam coming out. Pretty good amount of steam on that unit. It gets good and hot pretty quick. Okay, we'll close the lid. Oh, I don't have the air pressure on. Close the lid. I'm going to let that run for, let's say, 30 minutes and we'll see how much water is in there. And then we'll figure out how much water we add a day and then we'll figure how much that dilutes the honey crop. 
Okay, we'll check back with you in 30 minutes. Okay, and we're back with one minute to spare. We'll just let that timer click over to the uh, 30 minutes. You'll see that the water feed hose, that's that clear hose just to the uh, lower left of the clock, it'll jiggle back and forth and that's the uh, electronic valve shutting on and off to let more water in as the uh, steam escapes. So it's electronically controlled. It's got probably a float valve or something in there. Okay, I'm going to turn the uh, steamer off and all I've done is I just got this the control that came with the unit that you'd normally probably put in your shower uh, attached it to my extractor. So we turn that off. I have the timer, that's that clock blinking up there. It's just wired in parallel with my motor. So every time the extractor comes on, the timer goes on. I turn the extractor off, the clock is off, and if I turn my extractor back on, the clock starts again at midnight. And uh, so for everyone who feels uh, sorry about having their VCR flashing uh, midnight all the time, uh, don't because it's an effective timer. So there's that. Now, what do we got for water? Well, there's a fair bit here. We'll just let it keep dripping for a minute or two. And while it's doing that, I'll remind you that this is measuring the maximum amount of water. Uh, in real life, that extractor would be opening its lid about every five or six minutes, and a whole bunch of steam would escape. Uh, sometimes it looks quite cool when uh, they pop that lid open, and or maybe hot, I guess, uh, when that lid pops open and all the steam comes billowing out. So this is... Uh, there's no wood, there's no wax or anything to absorb that steam, so we're capturing the maximum possible. I feel like that's starting to slow down. While still doing that, uh, no, we're just, we're just going to see what we got here. This isn't, this isn't PhD level research here. We can afford to be a few grams off on the water. Okay. Okay, and here we are on the scale. And we have 2.02 kilos of water. So that sounds like a scary amount. I'm going to quickly do the math and we're going to figure out whether that is scary or not. All right, so I've done the math and let's have a look at what we've come up with. So I've got, remember we've had the weight, 2.02 .02 kilos of the wet dish minus the tear weight of the dish itself gives us 1.545 kilos of water. That's what the steamer added. We ran the test for 30 minutes, which is of a, you know, that's a half of an hour, eight hours a day gives you one sixteenth of a, a work day. So if we want to know how much water we're going to add over the whole day, we'd multiply by 16, giving us 24.72 kilos. And the cool thing about the metric system, of course, is that's actually 24 and almost three quarters liters of water over the whole day. So it's not insignificant, let's face it. Uh, you would want to make darn sure that this water is of high quality, potable, food safe, all that stuff. Now, is that significant? Uh, on an average extracting day, I'm getting 10 barrels. I've, I've done lots more than that and I've done lots less. So let's say 10 barrels giving us an estimated 2,900 kilos of honey. So when we work that out, the 24 uh, liters or 24 kilos of water 
over 2,900 kilos of honey gives us a in 85, uh, 0.85, not 85%, but uh, less than 1%, 0.85% moisture added by um, running the steamer. So that's, again, not insignificant. I would recommend that you think uh, carefully about when and if you would use a setup like this. You would want to proportion your uh, the amount of steam you would use to the uh, moisture level of your honey, the capacity of your system. Uh, I instruct my employees as they're extracting, uh, often they're running the steamer only the last minute of the extracting uh, cycle. So that would, you know, instead of it being run 30 minutes straight, it would run four or five minutes an hour. No, sorry, 45 minutes in a 30 minute period, three or four cycles per 30 minutes. So, you know, you can really proportion the amount of steam you want to add to the amount of honey you're extracting if you want to be careful about that. Uh, but even if you run the thing 100% and you capture 100% of the water, you're still adding less than 1% moisture. So I think that uh, in terms of in introducing t uh, excessive water that would increase uh, fermentation or anything like that, this system uh, I consider would be safe from that perspective. All right, that is my extracting tip for today. Uh, we'll be uh, up and running here in a couple days and uh, everything is washed down and cleaned and ready to go. So I'll do a video on the whole thing once uh, we're up and running <laughs> and once all the bugs are worked out. That's it for today. Thanks a lot.